This video is brought to you by the Fast Track to Deployment Property Adjuster Certification Program. Get trained up and prove to our partner firms that you're ready to work claims. There are only a few spots left and enrollment closes soon. Get moved to the front of the line at adjustertv.com slash certified. So you got some licenses, You've downloaded one of the many total adjuster package things from the internet. You may have even attended an inexpensive adjuster boot camp put on by an IA who's between storms and looking to make a little extra money. And the big storm hits, and now you're actually deployed. In this video, learn how to actually make money on your first catastrophe deployment and learn what a DNR is and why avoiding a DNR is probably not what you're thinking. Starting now. This is Adjuster TV, adjusters first. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV to get a 15% discount on damage assessment, CE training, industry certifications, books, and tools at HagueEducation.com. And by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Hey, Matt here and welcome to Adjuster TV where I share my more than 20 years of experience as a cat property IA to help you build a rewarding career as an independent insurance adjuster so that you can help people during natural disasters and earn a great living doing it. Big secret about the claims industry is that anybody can get on an IA firm's roster with zero licenses and zero training, but they're not gonna put you to work until you've gotten some licenses and at least some foundational training, okay? But the truth is that no matter what is on your resume, you could actually be a rocket surgeon. If you can't make it happen on your first property claims deployment, your chances of building a big boy or big girl career in claims is pretty low, okay? You've gotta prove that at the minimum you're trainable and that you have the potential to improve. In other words, you don't have to be closing seven claims a day on your first storm, but you do have to prove that you're capable of at least closing the first set of claims that they assign to you. That's the real test. And how you do there will tell whether your career takes off or blows up on the launch pad. So how do you keep all that time and money that you've spent to get into this work from being wasted? What can you do to get ramped up and actually close claims? Maybe even getting more new claims on your first storm. First, Say it all the time and I'll say it again. You cannot, under any circumstances, get overscoped. Being overscoped means that you have more claims inspected than you have closed. Some people will tell you that it's okay to scope all day for several days and then take a few days to write them up. But as I've mentioned a million times on this channel, your file quality and your customer service will quickly degrade the bigger the time gap between scoping and writing the claim, okay? And while it seems like you're making good use of your time by doing scoping all day long and then writing later, the truth is that because you're not getting daily feedback from file review and QA, you're going to be making a lot of silly mistakes and a lot more claims. So how does that work? If you turn in one claim that's full of mistakes, file review is gonna kick that claim back to you and request that you make all those corrections, right? So if you scope that one on Monday morning, you wrote it up on Monday night, and then you did those corrections on Tuesday afternoon between scoping Tuesday morning's claim and then writing Tuesday morning's claim up that night, then you'll be calibrated to what file review is looking for so that Tuesday's claim isn't gonna have those same errors in it, right? It may have errors, but it's very likely that there will be far fewer. On the other hand, if you scope five on Monday, five on Tuesday, five on Wednesday, and then you write them all up on Thursday and Friday, maybe Saturday, every single one of those 15 claims is gonna get kicked back for all of those silly mistakes that you made, okay? Plus a lot more. You're gonna spend at least an entire day, if not two or three, fixing those errors. That's a couple of days you could have spent actually closing another claim. I'd rather have six or 10 solid, fully closed claims done by the end of the first seven days on CAT as a new person, instead of spending a week and a half or more struggling to get those first 15 claims corrected and closed. Long story short, only scope which you can reasonably close that same day. Not only is this a best practice, but in many cases it's required by the carrier. They may have a 24 hour time between scoping and closing that claim. Secondly, while it's all well and good to say not to get over scoped, and honestly, if that's the only thing you change about how you run claims, it's gonna help you immensely, that doesn't mean that you can just cruise along only closing one or two claims a day. There are two main reasons why you must strive to, by the end of your very first CAT deployment, close at least four claims a day. 
One, cat property work truly isn't worth it to only make three to 600 bucks a day. Yes, it's pretty decent money, but when you're on cat, the clock is ticking and you need to get as much done during the day as possible. You gotta make hay while the sun shines. And two, while you're not gonna get in trouble for only closing two claims a day, you're not likely to get new claims assigned to you, right? What's better, working a hurricane where you only do 40 claims at 300 bucks a pop, or one where you do 140 claims at 300 bucks a pop, right? Claims are assigned to the adjusters who are closing good quality claims. So how do you figure out how many claims you can do in a day? You take an honest look at how long it takes you to scope and then write up your claims without losing quality. How, whatever that number is during one day, that's what you do. But how can you get up to at least four closed claims a day? You gotta spend some time looking for places where you can be more efficient in your claims handling. And thirdly, before we talk about efficiency, what is a DNR? DNR means do not rehire, and it's what happens to an adjuster who fails to adapt to the pressure and the work that we do when we go on a storm deployment. Some people call it blacklisting, and while I think that there are certainly times when a person can absolutely be blacklisted, that is never hired again under any circumstances, DNR is probably a tad less extreme. The good news is, is that just because you're new in learning doesn't mean that if you don't fully live up to expectations that you're automatically gonna be DNR. If you don't hit Matt's magical four a day by the end of the storm, that doesn't mean you're gonna be a DNR. You can still be doing one a day. You really have to screw up pretty bad to have that happen. All that to say that if your claims are low quality, you're not answering your phone or calling people back quickly, you're not closing your claims, in other words, you're just scoping and scoping and scoping, or you've just got a bad attitude or are hard to work with, nobody is gonna call you into their office and tell you that you need to shape up or pack your things and go home, right? they'll just stop assigning claims to you. If your manager doesn't think that you're capable of being a good adjuster, they can put a DNR on your file and then you just won't ever get called by that IA firm again. If you really drop the ball and fail to take care of the insurance company's customer, the carrier can put a DNR on you and especially with the big insurance companies who use multiple IA firms, you can't work claims for that carrier again, no matter which IA firm you try to work for, okay? This doesn't mean that you can't ever work claims again. You just can't do it with those companies without doing some heavy duty work on yourself with your training, your skills, maybe your attitude. Fourthly, and here is the dead horse that I beat constantly and that really informs all the other things that I talk about in this video and really almost every other video that I do. Being efficient doesn't necessarily mean being fast, okay? You're trying to get from point A to point B, and you've got two choices. You can go faster, which expends more energy, reduces quality, and increases the risk of a wipeout, which is why firms don't want you to go faster, or much better, you can just go the same speed, but shorten the distance between A and B. So you can still walk there and get there faster if, than if you ran the original distance, right? but you're using even less energy, you're keeping your quality high, and you're reducing your chances for disaster. So, but what does this look like in practical terms, right? Learning how to build and use macros in Xactimate. Learning how to move around over and through houses and buildings with little to no backtracking. You become a student of efficiency and you put a lot of effort into brutally analyzing your claims workflow in search of places where you can cut out unnecessary moves, okay? This is the prime way that you can get more claims closed every single day. Fifthly, you know, Xactimate skills are so important and such a big part of being a faster adjuster that they deserve their own segment in this video. Estimating software is used to express what you found at the loss, right? It's the thing that you use to document the damage or the lack thereof to explain what happened, who was there, what was said, and it's how the insurance company knows what to pay their customer for their claim. It's a big deal, and aside from your customer service skills, it's really the core of what you do as an adjuster. But the software is as complex as it is powerful, which means that it may not be immediately evident where to find things or how to get the program to do what you want it to do. Telling you right now, the number one time killer, the thing that will have you banging your head on your desk in your hotel room at one o'clock in the morning is not knowing where to find stuff in Xactimate. Whether it's fence slats, paint, where to put ITIL pricing, or how to create an angled staircase. If you don't have some level of fluency in Xactimate, 90 minutes will fly by with you stuck on the same thing and it's absolutely gonna kill your efficiency. The answer is of course, very simple. 
Go get your Xactimate level two user certification prep training. At the bare minimum, get the level one and actually take the tests and get the certifications. They look good on a resume and they will test you on if you actually understood the material. Adjuster TV has two Xactimate certified trainers and we often offer prep and testing for the user certifications. Just go over to adjustertv.com slash Xactimate to get deeper training on the software. And here's a special bonus thing to help you start making good money as an IA. Stop listening to people on social media, especially those who say things like, don't accept the deployment unless you negotiate the pay. I'm gonna tell you right now, you can't negotiate pay unless you have a proven track record. It's simple. As a new person, your main objective is to get working no matter what the pay is. Yes, take an hourly to start if that's what they've got. Well, you gotta get a drone and a drone license, of course. Do you though? I'm gonna tell you right now, you're just not going to use a drone very much on most claims. Most carriers require you to put your feet on the roof anyway, and they won't accept drone scoped claims. You don't need to bother getting a Xactimate user certification. You can just learn all that stuff on the internet or, or just figure it out yourself. Not only is getting an Xactimate user certification at least a level two, I would say, but the minimum, like I said, a level one, it's gonna look better to those who will hire you. They're gonna feel more comfortable sending you out in the field and giving you work. And it's also gonna make you better and faster so that you can make more money on your CAD deployments. Trust me on this one. Even if you've been using Xactimate for years, you will be surprised at how much you can learn from any of the Xactimate user certifications. It's up to you, but I'm telling you to do your own research and make up your own mind about the information that you're seeing out there on the internet. Focus on the core things that are gonna move the needle the most for you. Getting licensed, number one. Getting good training and certification in Xactimate, number two. And getting solid property adjuster training. And really most importantly, building relationships with your carriers and the firms instead of trying to work the system so that you can get money. Have you ever wished that there was a surefire way to get an IA firm's attention? One that doesn't include harassing them every few days with a phone call, talking to the same bored HR person, what would it look like to get your resume in the hands of the person who actually decides who gets deployed and who sits on the bench? What if there was a way to prove that you're ready? Most IA firms won't give claims to adjusters with zero experience and zero training, but how do you get experience if nobody will give you a chance? Matt here with Adjuster TV, and I'm very excited to announce that it's back fast track to deployment property IA certification. We call it FTD. So what is this thing and how can it help you? The fast track to deployment is a live online program that teaches you the core skills that IA firms require new adjusters to have on their first storm. You've got to show up with these. This program tests you so that Adjuster TV can personally certify to those firms that you are ready to work. And we're reopening enrollment for a limited time to a limited number of students because it is live. By the end of this program, you will have a framework for building and executing your schedule as a brand new adjuster. You'll have a system for closing claims quickly in that schedule. You'll have a systematic plan for inspecting, estimating, and correctly documenting your claims. You'll have a blueprint for stellar customer service that will have IA firms begging you to work for them. In other words, what to say and what not to say to insureds. You'll have a tried and true technique for doing your own file review before you send your claims up so that you can cut down on kickbacks. You'll have exclusive training on how to build estimates for the most common construction and estimating scenarios that you're going to encounter as an adjuster. You name it, we'll cover it. Everything from roof repairs and replacements, siding, windows, sheds, fences, decks, drywall, all kinds of flooring, cabinets, vanities, so on and so forth. And last, but certainly not least, you will have been tested by Adjuster TV on all these skills and knowledge with an exam, as well as real world style claim scenarios that will go through a file review. You'll know exactly what to do and when to do it. No more emergencies, panic, or freakouts. This is your chance to prove yourself to the firms and get moved to the front of the line. This training will be conducted live over the internet and replays will be available to you after each session if you can't make it live. And not only that, but you'll get these bonuses to help keep you at the top of your game on your first storm deployment. A comprehensive companion digital workbook for all the lessons, complete checklists and calendars for routing and scheduling your claims, Xactimate macros and templates, as well as scripts for contacting insureds, contractors, and others. There is weekly live group Q&A support to help you get ready to pass and be certified. 
continued support post-graduation to help you through the rough spots and to answer questions when you get deployed. We call it phone a friend. Oh, and that major bonus, Xactimate Level 1 and 2 certification training and testing. By the end of the week, you'll have the opportunity to take either the Level 1 or 2 certification exam with us as a group. And then one very important final point on this. One of the biggest questions I get with this training is, Matt, I want to be ready to go to the storm season, but I can't attend any of the live sessions. Can I still enroll and pass the certification? And this is how I answer that question. The benefit of attending live is that you get direct access to me and my trainers throughout every session. But if you can't make it, you will still have everything that you need to pass the certification by watching the replay. We actually just certified a student who was not able to attend a single live session and yet was able to kill it on both the multiple choice and practical assignment portions of the certification final. It all comes down to whether or not you're willing to put in the time. So don't let the dates of the training be the only thing holding you back from getting certified in time for this storm season. We only teach this thing a few times a year, so whether you're in or you're out, make sure you decide now before those 20 seats sell out and the doors to enrollment close. And don't forget, you're gonna have live access to me and my trainers every single week to get your questions answered. It's a really huge perk to this program and we keep an archive of past weekly live sessions for you to search as well. This is a big program and you'll get this all at a very nice price that's never going to be lower again. So if you're all in on becoming a working cat property adjuster, then your next step is to prove it to our partner firms and get certified by Adjuster TV the most trusted name in claims. Enroll right now at adjustertv.com slash certify. If this video was helpful to you, I would be very grateful if you could give us a like and a subscribe. All right, that's it for me. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. Adjuster TV. We have nothing to fear but fear itself and spiders. And if you like this video, I know you'll like this one.